how to pack artwork in the glass frame coming right up. Thank you for being here in my studio today, as always. So, I am really excited today because I have artwork going to a gallery. Woohoo! Who wouldn't be happy about that, right? Okay, so this is this amazing gallery, um, Willis and Sellers Gallery, um, owned, half owned by a friend of mine, Ben Sellers, who is a really amazing sort of whimsical um, pen and ink and watercolor painter. He's great. I will link down to him below, but I am really excited because I am shipping him off some new drawings today and they're actually charcoal drawings. Obviously not this one because they are already packed, but um, they are charcoal figure drawings like this and they are in glass or behind glass in frames and that is a huge pain in the you know what to ship. So I figured that if you are like me and need to ship things on a budget but need to make sure that they do not break on the way, I would make you a little tutorial. I spent very little money on the packaging supplies creating um, this very, very secure box of four drawings. So I will show you how to do it today. I hope you little learn a little something. If you do, pretty, pretty, pretty please hit that subscribe button. A thumbs up is awesome. If you want to share this video, that is incredible. And um, make sure if you haven't already, you pop down to my Birds of a Feather newsletter because I will be having one of my special little exclusive whatever behind the scenes um, uh, newsletters that I send out about once a month. Usually kind of just like a, a personal letter about what's going on like really behind, 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 behind the scenes here around here. So anyways, I got that link down below too. And yeah, hope you enjoy it. Hope you love it. Thank you for being here as always. Mwah! trying something new today. I am filming this entire tutorial on the floor. What the hell, right? So to ship your artwork, you are going to need some scissors, a sharpie, a sharp utility blade, shipping tape, and painter's tape. If you can get reused bubble wrap envelopes and cardboard boxes, then you get extra brownie points. Once you have your pieces all nice and framed up, make sure that you attach a business card to the back to make sure that the gallery does not forget whose artwork belongs to who. Trust me, they will love you for it. Okay, so first things when you want to ship something that is framed in glass is you want to protect that glass. Think about all those buildings you see when folks are about to have a hurricane or other natural disaster. Tape that puppy up as best as you can. Using a nice wide painter's tape is very crucial for this step because you want it to be very secure. However, you want it to be nice and easy to remove as soon as it reaches its final destination. Hopefully you're like me and you save some good bubble wrap packages to reuse for later. Hooray, now is the perfect time. Find a good snug fit, tape it up, and get it ready to go. Okay, this next step can seem more complicated than it is. I happen to have these amazing, perfect cross packages that I got from my calendars that I ordered. However, if you don't magically have these perfect packages, let me show you how to cut some. If you have a large piece of cardboard, you can cut out little squares in each corner that match up with the piece of art you are trying to ship and cross cross tape. Otherwise, just snag a cardboard box that is a bit larger than the wrapped up piece of artwork and we will make a few measurements and then a few cuts and you will make your own T-shaped sort of snug design. To create the first cardboard pocket of your artwork, make a line about six inches away from each side using one edge as the edge of it. Next, draw a line along the top and bottom edges of your pre-wrapped frame. 
Next, go ahead and trim all those lines. Now that we've trimmed it to fit along the top and bottom, we want the edges to hug it nice and close. What we want to do is score the cardboard along the creases to fit the top and bottom edges of the artwork. I'm going to represent that by doing dotted lines to show that I am not going to actually cut this cardboard all the way through. I am only going to cut the top layer in order to make it easier to fold. That way we can hug it across the top and bottom of this framed artwork in such a way that it will be nice, safe, snug, and secure for shipping. Next, we will orient the package the other direction and do the exact same thing oriented the other way. That way we have one panel going towards the width and one panel going towards the length. It will provide a nice, stable, secure coverage for both sides. Okay, first things first, let's find a box. Now, hopefully you find a box and everything fits in perfectly. However, if you're like me and nothing fits right ever, we will Frankenstein one together. What you're gonna wanna do is open up the box along one side so that it can open nice and flat and then we are going to change the sizing of it. Just like when we were making the first covering for the frame, we are going to score it. So you'll see my dotted line where I'm going to score the box. Basically, I want the box to fit snugly around this pile of frames as well as possible. So as you can see, I'm moving it back and forth to each side and scoring each area to find out where it will fold in order to hold it snugly. Once you make sure everything is going to fit well, then you're gonna wanna open things back up again before taping and we're going to want to cut little slits where the edges are just like in a box how the edges don't meet exactly right where they fold having those little slits just gives it a little breathing room and makes it much much easier to tape and for everything to lay flat so i am creating my own little slits that way when i have my own corner edges everything will smooth around just like butter So now that you have your box the correct shape, you can go ahead and start taping it up. However, I would definitely not tape the box to the inner contents. Ideally, you want the gallery or person opening it to be able to slide out your artworks and then eventually be able to reuse the box. For a lot of gallery shows, this is a requirement. So make sure that you do not attach the outside box to the inside box because that will become a huge pain in anybody's neck. Okay, now be honest. How much do you love my little five-sided box? Oh yeah. Now you see that little corner there, that empty space? What you can do is take your other cardboard pieces and kind of curl them up and shove them in there. It makes a really good protective layer for empty space and it won't weigh down your box either. 